Hey, hey, superstar, CEO, Brother Henry here. I'm back following the theme of the week. The theme of the week being the real pyramid scheme. Let's dive deep. Let's dive right in. I don't even want to waste no time. All right. The real pyramid scheme. Now, I know a lot of people think network marketing is a pyramid scheme. They're like, oh, you got to go get, you got to pay, you know, $99 to join or whatever the fee is to join. And then you got to go get licensed and then you got to go do these things. And then you got to go recruit these people and bring these people in. And then you got to bring in three and your three got to bring in three. So now, you know, you had 12 people total and you got to build this team out. And so people call that a pyramid scheme. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that. When it comes to network marketing, network marketing has some of the greatest training on the planet because network marketing is 90% self-development, personal growth, personal development, and 10% your business, whatever business you're in. Now, it's not for everybody. I understand that. If you are the type of person that, does, that has tried network marketing and you was like, this ain't for me, I, it didn't work out for me, whatever the case may be, that's, hey, I hear you. It's not for everybody. I've heard stories, or I shouldn't say I've heard stories, I know people who have been extremely successful with network marketing, if that's their thing. And none of those people said, yo, it's a pyramid scheme, right? I just realized the dopeness of uh, this topic because the Kikifer's Entrepreneurial Academy logo is a pyramid. That's dope. I just now caught the, okay, double entendre hen. I'm dropping double entendre. That's a bar. I'm giving y'all double entendres and I ain't even trying to. I'm so lyrical. You feel me? That's that lyrical, spiritual, miracle material. You feel me? Anyway, so the real pyramid scheme, right? People, you know, there's a lot of talk um, on what is a pyramid scheme, what's not, especially when it comes to like network marketing. But that, that is not a pyramid scheme based on what I've seen, right? Because the biggest and the best pyramid schemes never disguise themselves as pyramid schemes. I need you to, I need you to follow me on this, all right? If you've been following, you know I've been giving away this free information for weeks at a time now. Follow where we're about to go with this one, all right? We're about, we about to jump right in, all right? Let's talk about the real pyramid scheme. Let me draw, let me, let me draw the pyramid on the board. I need y'all to see this, all right? What color that is. This is my pyramid, all right? Y'all like my pyramid? I don't know if you like my pyramid or not. Can you see that? It looks, it looks decent. Oh, I just remember. Hold on. Hold on. Hold fast. Give me two seconds. I got to make sure we don't get interrupted. All right. All right. I'm here. I'm here. This is my pyramid, all right? And this is not even gonna be a long one, but I just wanna show you how this works because everybody starts down here. A pyramid works just like a rocket ship. When a rocket first takes off, you need an exuberant amount of energy for a rocket ship to take off, right? I think they said something like rocket ships burn like 80% of their energy, some crazy number like that at takeoff. Then the rest, once, once it has momentum behind it, the more the momentum uh, got, uh, carries it, the momentum just carries it. But the mass majority of energy is expended in the takeoff or the liftoff of a rocket ship. All right. That's very important because when we're talking about the pyramid scheme, I need you to understand how this pyramid thing breaks down. All right. So at the bottom, right at the top, you have like one percent of this. I don't like this color marker. Let me get a different color marker. Hold on. This ain't this ain't it right here. Let me get it. Let me get a. Let me get a good color marker. All right. At the top, you got like what they call a one percent, right? All the one percent means. Let me translate this for you. One percent just means. One percent just means that you make two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or more. That's what the one percent is to qualify for the one percent. And actually, I want to say if you break six figures. You go into like the top 5%, but the 1% is considered, where's my, let me make this not so sloppy, 
so it's not so confusing. All right. $250,000 is what it takes to be considered part of the 1%. All right. The 1% is at the top of the pyramid. Do you know what else is at the top of the pyramid? Also at the top of the pyramid right here is reward. And I'm going to break this down for you in a second. And when I say reward, I'm talking about fancy car or cars with an S, the big house, multiple vacations, right? Shopping sprees, all the things people talk about, right? I'll say um, for a lot of people, I'll say, you know, rapper life. That's what I'll call it because people, uh, people can relate. They know exactly what I mean when I say rapper life. Like, whatever your thing is, I don't know what type of person you are. If you're the type of person that's like, you go to the club, maybe you want to buy out sections, you want to buy, buy bottles, you want to be seen, maybe that's you. Maybe you like designer clothes, you like getting the fancy clothes. Maybe you want, you know what I'm saying, a bunch of big time cars. You want the Bentley, you want the Lambo, you want the Lambo truck. You want the Mercedes on special rims that's customized. You want the McLaren. You, you want the big cars, the big homes. You want to be seen. You want to live that life. Let me tell you something. Based on our money consciousness, there's absolutely nothing wrong with one of those things in life. Absolutely nothing wrong. Don't let somebody make you feel less than for saying that you want nice things, for saying that you want these material things, right? Now, the reason why you want those things, whole different story. But there's nothing wrong with wanting those things. All right. So understand at the top of the pyramid is the one percent. All right. Meaning they make a quarter million or more and they also experience bigger rewards than most people because they're at the top. Right now, let me tell you about getting to the top because I'm trying to show you this real pyramid scheme that most people participate in but don't know all right let me get a different color so i can represent the pyramid correctly i got all kind of markers over here let me just grab one what's a good color what color we got up there all right let's see what let's see what let's see what this color does right quick all right so all right so reward is at the top we see reward at the top all right but something you have to keep in mind if you want to avoid or use this pyramid scheme Something we got to talk about is risk. All right, I don't know if y'all can see my pyramid or not. Something we got to talk about is risk. And something else we got to talk about on the way up is work ethic. Right? And these are on the way up. All right? On the way up. All right? Now, what am I talking about? Let's talk about risk and let's talk about work ethic. All right. Everybody starts at the bottom. Some people don't. Some people may start at the top. Maybe you had a silver spoon. Maybe you had a trust. Maybe you were born into a family of millionaires. I don't know. Majority of people that are watching me started at the bottom, like Drake said. Started at the bottom. Now we're here. Right. If you're watching me, the chances are highly likely that you're you like me had to get it out the mud. You, like me, weren't given anything. You had to go get everything that you had to earn. You, like me, have to work day in and day out to make it happen. So you, like me, received a blessing. And that blessing is that having to get it out the mud, having to start at the bottom, having to go through hard times, struggle, and adversity, it works to our character. It teaches you how to hustle hard and never quit. So risk here's a big thing about the pyramid scheme all right because just in the word itself pyramid scheme is a negative connotation but it's not necessarily a negative thing if you understand what you have to do to get to the top of the one percent understand something every person has a 100 percent chance of becoming part of the one percent if they use this pyramid all right now the amount of risk that people at the bottom take is little to none. There's not a lot of risk when you go fill out a job application, you turn it in, you go to an interview, yeah, you risk time, but there's not a lot of risk on your part as far as the business is concerned. The person who created that business you work for, that person took on all the risk. When you're an entrepreneur, entrepreneurs take on an extreme amount of risk, but 
there's levels to the amount of risk that you take on. Small time entrepreneur, small time risk. That, there's a reason why if you are an entrepreneur, but on the pyramid, you haven't made it to the 1%, maybe you right here, or maybe you right here, or maybe you right here, and you're climbing up to become part of that 1%, there's a reason why if you are an entrepreneur, you haven't made it to this top yet, how much risk are you willing to take? Risk is a huge part of becoming successful. If you want a big reward, you have to take a big risk. And here's something that I learned the hard way. If you take a big time risk, there's no guarantee you're going to get the reward. In business, I have lost everything. And when I tell you everything, I mean everything. In business, I have lost everything on more than one occasion. And if you are not willing to not only take the risk that it takes to climb up the pyramid and take the chance that you may lose it, and if you lose it, get back up and take that same risk again. If you're not willing to do that, you're never gonna make it to the top of the pyramid. You've already fallen victim to the pyramid scheme because you're not willing to risk everything to gain everything, right? Bone Thugs and Harmony got this song I love. In the hook they say, there's always something you gotta give up if you want everything that you want. And most of us are not willing to sacrifice what it takes in risk to get to the top. In congruency with the risk is your work ethic. I did not say hard work. Understand something, hard work will not get you rich. Not necessarily. I know some hard workers that work at factories 12 hours a day. And if they, if they boss say they get an 84K a year, then that's what they get. It doesn't matter how hard they work, they're getting 84K a year, point blank period, right? Hard work does not necessarily equal more money. Hard work ethic, your work ethic tells everything about you, right? Because it's better to work smarter than to work harder. So right now I have this thing where I'm teaching people how to um, set up and run these different funnels, right? And you can literally create multiple streams of income Every single day of your life, some will be streams, some will be dried up crooks you just get rid of, but build multiple streams of income every single day, and so that way now you are using your work ethic to climb up the pyramid, and even that has low risk, but there's still some risk, but it's not as high as, say, a person who wants to start a bank and puts up their own money, right? But the risk and work ethic that you put into a project, that you put into a business, that you put into a creation, that you put into an invention, that risk and work ethic. If you wanna get to the top, you have to be willing to go level by level by level and put in more and more risk and have a cleaner and a stronger work ethic. That's how the pyramid works, okay? Everybody starts at the bottom, the people that make it to the 1%, and I'm telling you this from experience, there isn't one person that I've met that's in the 1% that does not have a crazy work ethic. Every single person I know that's in the 1% has a crazy work ethic. They work. People have this idea that you can go make all this money so you can relax. People that make all this money make that money because they impact lives. And they don't impact lives specifically to make money, they impact lives because it's what they love to do. And when you love to serve other people and you serve other people in mass, in big numbers, once you do that, you get rewarded with money, okay? You have to understand the law of money. So you have to give value to people and the more you give people a greater value that impacts their life even greater, the more money you can make, all right? So understand risk, understand work ethic on the pyramid on the way up, okay? Understand that that's huge. Now, there's something else though. Let me get, where my markers go? I'm wrong, run out of colors. You know, I, I like to play with markers maybe since I was a child, right? Here's the other side to this though, right? Here's a beautiful thing about this pyramid. And we put here, energy, right? You don't have to put the same amount of energy into a project the higher up you go. It ta actually takes less energy. Remember, the rocket ship, 
When a rocket ship first starts, it burns the majority of its energy just lifting off the ground, the same way with any business. It's very, very hard to start a business. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's, it, no matter what business you get into, it's extremely hard to start a business, right? It takes a lot of energy, a lot of time, a lot of focus, a lot of patience, a lot of hard days. It takes a lot to start a business. But once you get that business rolling, you don't have to put the same amount of energy into it. And if you're smart, you're gonna do something. If you're smart, especially in 2021, you're gonna find a way to automate. Because once you can automate your business, you do all the hard work up front, you get all the reward on the back end for as long as that system stays relevant to the market. So if I create a system where people can come shop on my platform and buy things from me. And once the platform is built, all I have to do is let other people create their own profile. And every time they sell on my platform, I'll get some of the money. That's how a Jeff Bezos can sit back. Amazon can sell like crazy. He already created the platform. He already did all the hard work up front. He put in all the time, the hard work, the effort, the work ethic, and the risk up front. So now on the back end, he puts less energy in right he puts in less energy because now that he's at the one percent he's already built the platform up front the problem is just a couple problems all right i'm not sure i don't forget problem number one problem number one folks be lazy let's call a spade a spade folks are lazy right folks are lazy problem number two this red marker don't work. Let me get a different red marker. This red marker flaked on me. Problem number two. Oh, I like that red marker. Okay. Y'all can see that. Problem number two is disbelief. Okay. Why are these two problems affecting you from starting a business? If you're lazy, you probably want somebody else to do it for you. All right. I get people to I outsource in business often at where I'm at in business now if it's something that I don't want to do, and if it makes sense. I don't outsource for everything. Even if I don't want to do it, it doesn't make sense. I outsource when I can, right? People, okay, let me give you this story to make this lazy point. One day I'm at, um, I'm at uh, what's, what's, what's OG name? I'm at Olin Bell's house getting my fire stick hooked up. And I don't remember the brother's name that was over his house, but brother says to me, he said, yo, man, I see the moves you making. I'm, I'm studying you. I'm watching you. I see you out here getting to the bag, man. I want to be just like you, man. I want to be a boss and sit around and not do no work and tell people what to do and get paid from it. And so I almost had to laugh when he said it because I'm like, <laughs> you think your impression of me is that I sit around, tell other people what to do. Don't put in no work and I get paid from it. The complete opposite is true. I am at the school before other people or which, whatever business I'm there before everybody else. I work through the problems. I am the initial and the main problem solver. And when everybody else is gone, I'm still there working like it's to outwork me. You're going to have to have a very strong work ethic because my work ethic is bar none. You you have to be a hard worker to outwork me. OK because I, when I'm dedicated and I'm on something, I'm dedicated and I'm on it, right? So in his mind, he think all I do is sit around and tell people what to do. That's not true. I'm like, listen, everything they're doing, I've done and I can show them how to do. And if they're not there, I can fill in and do myself, right? But I'm at a point now where I can at least, where I'm, I have a team built and because I have a team built now, because I went through the pain of building the team up front, now you see I can collect a little bit of reward, but trust me, ain't that much reward. You have the wrong idea in mind about money and you have the wrong idea in mind about building a team and what it means to be a business owner. All of the one percenters that I know are hard, have a hard work ethic. They all work hard. Like these are people. I start sending text messages out to people um, around before 5 a.m. and I get responses. What does that tell you? I get up at 440, 4.40 a.m. Recently, it's been like 4.35 a.m. I get up at 4.35 a.m., get dressed. If you, you, if you heard me say this before, you heard me say it. I get up at 4.40 a.m., 
take my vitamins, write my write in my gratitude journal, and I'm on the road to the gym to go work out. I'm at the gym by 5 a.m. I'm working out by 5, 10 a.m. I'm in the steam room by like 5, 15 a.m. I'm back home showering on my way to school. I'm in the morning meetup with Dave Shands and the whole morning meetup family. I'm at my school at eight o'clock. I'm doing a pledge. I'm giving a motivational speech. I'm jumping on the ATS business call, and then my day is starting. Or, and then from there, I'm jumping on a client attraction business call, and then my day is starting. From 4.35 a.m. to 10 a.m., that is consistent work without a break. Most people that are, I guess, competing with me, I don't know if they're competing with me or not. I don't know who competes with me. I only compete with myself and the best version of myself. But those who are similar, what time do you wake up? What time do you go to bed? What excuses do you make? Right? What's your standard? Like if you go to bed late, do you say I'm just not going to get up the next morning or do you still get up? I get up and go to the gym because I want to be in shape because health is wealth. You need health. to. If you're going to get wealth, why make all this money if you can't spend it? Or why make all not spend it, but why make all this money if you can't live to enjoy it? So, yes, health is wealth. So I'm at the gym working hard. I'm putting in hours. I'm putting in work. Sometimes I work on a project and I, don't, I might not get paid for that project for three months. Right. I worked at my school. I need you to understand something. Right. We didn't just pop up out of nowhere. The first two years our school ran, we never even got paid. Literally ran a school collecting tuition, taking care of other people's needs, giving high value and high impact to the community without getting paid. I had to depend on my other ways of making money in order to get paid. I had to depend on what it is I'm good at to get paid because my business that I wanted to be my main business, I put in a lot of risk and work ethic, but I'm not at the top. So I had to make the sacrifice. So you can't come to a you can't come to want to be a business owner and be lazy. All right. You have to be willing to put in work. When, it, when others are not putting in work. You have to be on your game every day. I, listen, I either read or listen to audiobooks every day. I'm on the phone talking to people above me in my circle every day. I'm getting inspired by people that are in better positions to push me up every day. Like This is an everyday thing for me. I might go live Monday through Friday, or the days I don't go live is because I'm on podcasts. I get booked to speak. I get booked for podcasts. I get booked for different things. So if I'm not doing a live, then it's probably because I'm booked up tight. Like that's the reality. You got to be willing to work. Number two, even more than being lazy, because a lazy person, if they just believe, can at least work until they start to believe. If you disbelieve in yourself, in your business, in your capabilities, in your talent, in your potential, you're never going to grow. All right. Disbelief kills more businesses then lack of customers, then lack of marketing, then lack of money, then lack of inventory, then lack of material. Disbelief is the number one killer of businesses. All right. You got to believe. And that's because so many businesses that could be launched are not launched because people disbelieve in themselves. It like business is 90 percent personal development, 10 percent action. It literally is 90 percent personal development. So right now, if you're not a reader, and you got access to YouTube and audiobooks, and you're not taking advantage of at least audiobooks, even if you're not a reader, you, you're playing yourself. If you're not taking advantage of all the free information that's out there on the web right now, you're playing yourself. All right. So let me tell you about the pyramid scheme. All right. Tell you why this is so crazy. Let me erase a little bit. I'm about to show you something. You're going to love this. All right. <laughs> and based on the response you give me, tells me the type of person you are. But let me take this break to say, if you are a barber, stylist, uh, anything in the beauty industry, any type of service provider, even if you're not, but if you are a service provider and you would like to learn how to create a client attraction system that will help you to generate more income without having to work 24 seven, then be sure to stop by my website, at work with CEO bro Henry dot com. All right, make sure check it out. If you go there right now, I got a free gift for you. I give you my three key strategies that I use to help clients make more money than they're making right now to double, triple, or 
even quadruple their income depending on how far they want to go it's a simple system that i help you set up that anybody can use and it will help you because most people do not know understand or know how to use leverage to build their business to build a system so that's what i help my clients to do i'll give you this right away it's not free and it's not cheap so if you are interested you can go to my website work with ceo brother Go ahead and check out my free gift to you. Even if you're not interested, you can get the free, the three key strategies that I give and you can implement them yourself and I give you the roadmap so you can build it on your own. You don't necessarily need me to do it, but if you would like to work with me, go ahead, check out my free video, um, get my free gift from you, book an appointment and I'll get on the phone and see if, if you're a good fit to work with me and if I feel like I'm a good fit to coach you and I can actually get you results, then we can talk about working together. But I will never work with a client if I can't get them results. Anyway, back to our regularly scheduled program. This is crazy. Check this out. Check this out. All right. Um, all right. Uh, where are we at? All right. Did you know? <laughs> this is how crazy this is. Pyramid schemes. A lot of people think the real pyramid scheme is like network marketing. Oh, if I go join network marketing, I got to pay to join to make money. Then I got to go get licensed to make money. Then I got to recruit three people. Then my three people got to recruit three people. And I got to build this team. And I got to get like four generations deep of three people recruiting three people. I got to go recruit like 50 people. I feel you. If you had your own business and you recruited 50 people to your business and you had a system for them to make money, you'd be killing. But since you don't, people do network marketing so you can use somebody else's platform, somebody else's product to, to uh, uh, build up your revenue, build up your capital. Then you can take that capital and start your own business because now you understand the platform, you understand the uh, uh, products, and you understand how to build a team. So that's just my suggestion for me. I didn't make a lot of money doing network marketing, but the training was so valuable. The training that I got doing network marketing was out of this world. I loved it. So it's, it's, it's up to you depending on where you're at. Anyway, let's get to this right quick. This is the main crux on what I'm talking about with this pyramid scheme, though, all right? This pyramid right here is not a scheme. This pyramid is how to use the pyramid to go from the bottom to the top, right? This down here, the 99%. The 99% is almost at a flat line because they're not taking a lot of risk, they don't have a strong work ethic, and they're putting out too much energy. If your job is killing you, and you're working 40 hours a week, and if you're working 40 hours a week for 40 years to retire on 40% of what you make, that's the 40-40-40 plan. Ain't nobody got rich off of that, right? If you're putting out all this energy and you're still at the bottom, you got to re-examine where you're at. Now, I don't know what the bottom is for you. The bottom may be a certain money amount. It may be your lifestyle. It may be whatever. I don't know. But if you put out all that energy and you still at the bottom, re-examine that you could put in less energy, take more risk, have a strong work ethic, and it could take you to the top to make more money. I'm just saying that's how the pyramid works. Check this out, though. This is crazy to me, right? This is the real pyramid scheme. All right? And, hey, don't report my video. <laughs> Don't report my video and get me popped off, all right? But today's case study, today's case study deals with a corporation you may know by the name Walmart, the big giant. Did you know that the Walmart Do you want to know how much money Walmart CEOs make? Remember, the CEO is the person at the top of the pyramid. Do you want to know how much money a Walmart CEO makes? Um, Walmart CEOs, on average, make, drum roll please, matter of fact, let's, let's put this in green, right? 22, that there five seven four three five eight the average walmart ceo makes twenty two million five hundred seventy four thousand three hundred and fifty eight dollars you want to talk about a pyramid scheme right going to get that job where they make you put out all your energy to stay at the bottom while they put out little energy at the top because they have automated systems that are running on their own. And the CEO has a vice CEO. He has an entire board that's with him. He has regional managers, store managers, managers, supervisors, employees. They have an entire hierarchy that's built. So while there's a lot of responsibility at the top, 
Another thing that goes up is responsibility. You can put that there. The more you build, the more people you take care of, the more responsibility you have. Right now I have four, I have like nine, 10, 11, 12. I got like maybe 14 employees right now, right? It's more responsibility. Having that many employees, you gotta, that's, I'm responsible for those people getting paid. If I don't do what I need to do responsibly on my side and they don't get paid, there's gonna be problems for me, trust assure. There's more responsibility the higher up you go. The responsibility gets crazy. So if you're a person that's not responsible, it would say, why are you not making it to the top? You're irresponsible, right? You don't wanna put the burden of taking care of other people's families on your shoulder. But if you take that burden with the risk and the work ethic, you can make it to the top of that pyramid, all right? The Walmart CEO, on average, makes $22,574,358, all right? That is, drum roll please, one, oops, that is 1,078 times more than the average Walmart employee. I don't know if y'all... I don't know if y'all hearing me right now. Walmart CEOs make 1,078 times more than the average Walmart employee. What does that mean? Does that, that tells you to the hierarchy and the structure of this pyramid that the CEO is 1,078 times more valuable than the person that's at the bottom. Now, if you work at Walmart, this is not a knock to anybody. I worked at Walmart in the past, okay? So this ain't a knock, trust me. I've been fired from 25 jobs. I know all about working at the bottom, giving all your energy, and still getting fired after everything you give to a company and you feel cheated, right? You feel like I put in all this work, I put in all this effort, I gave you everything I have, and I didn't mean anything to you, you still got rid of me. Trust me, I know that feeling like the back of my hand. Do you, I, it is not an exaggeration when I tell you I was fired from over 25 jobs. Man, do you know what it does to the esteem of especially a young black man fired from over 25 jobs? Do you know what it's like having to drive home and tell your wife you ain't got a job no more? You don't know how the bill's gonna get paid and you don't know where food's coming from and you don't know what the next move's gonna be because you got fired again? When the last thing she told you is, I don't care what happens at your job, you need to keep this job so you can put food on the table, and now you gotta go home, you got no money in savings because you don't know a financial advisor that's showing you how to save your money properly and have an emergency fund and a crisis fund and how to put your money in certain investment accounts so you can turn $1 into two and two into four, eight, 16, 32, 64. You, you don't have that in your life, so now you back at the bottom struggling trying to figure it out. I know all about that. I know all about it. So you can't come to me talking that talk because I live that talk. Like that's been the mass majority of my life. I've been poor at the bottom, putting out all this energy and not getting a lot in return. And it's, cra it's a crazy feeling when you put out that much energy at the bottom and you don't get a lot in return. Crazy feeling. But as it goes, the Walmart CEO, $22 million a year. 22 million, the Walmart employee, 1,078 times divided to get to that. That means from this step to the CEO step, there's 1,078 steps to get to that top rung as the CEO. Now, I'll be honest with you, big companies, big corporations like that, that CEO is probably a friend of the family. He probably didn't even work hard for it. But guess what? When you own the business, you can put on whoever you want to put on. There's people I've put on and plugged to jobs and opportunities and given, um, Giving, giving them opportunities to make money and put them in position because they are, they're my people. Like that's the whole reason I wanna go into business. I don't care what somebody else is doing with their business, I wanna be able to put my own people on. Now listen man, they say you ain't good enough, cool, don't even worry about that. Come come work with me, come come work for me. I'm gonna show you how to do X, Y, and Z. And I don't want nobody around me that's not bo that doesn't have a boss mentality. Like if you're not thinking, how can I be my own boss? How can I get out and run stuff? How can I own my own? I don't want you around me. I only wanna be around bosses. So you only see me, if you ever see me hanging out, trust assure, I'm, it's some bosses with me because I don't hang out. Because the people with me, the people I'm around, they ain't got time to hang out because they trying to get it. And if we are hanging out, we have some social event or whatever, we enjoying ourselves. Trust me, even at that social event, we talking money, we're talking business, we're talking the next move, we talking coming up. I got invited by, um, ooh, she's going to kill me for forgetting her name right now. But I really, since she's an alderman and her daughter goes to my school, um, what's Giselle's mom's name? Anyway, 
her name will pop in my head in a second when I stop thinking about it. But she invited me and my wife to come out. They had some event out here, the uh, the gala on the rocks recently. And she's like, I got she's like, I got a VIP table. It's bottles on the table. We don't drink, but it's still bottles there. So it's something to brag about, right? Come on out. It'll be other aldermen there, other big time people to all be at the table. You can network, do your thing. So cool. Me and my wife popped out. We was at the event. We put the pictures on Facebook. And guess what we was talking about at that event? The next moves. The next moves, like what's next? Okay, we we planned out a bunch of stuff, right? The next move. I only I only roll with bosses like that, man. So and it's because if you're not trying to get it like that, what are we gonna talk about? Unless maybe you like one of my day ones or something. But anyway, back to the point. So the Walmart employee and the Walmart CEO, there's a huge gap in the amount of money they make. But between the CEO and between the Walmart employee, who has the most risk? Tell me that question. If you are the type of person that says it's not fair, then that means you don't understand how life works and that means that you probably are not a person that's taking a lot of risk. That CEO is taking on more risk than if something happens in any Walmart or especially their Walmarts that they're in charge of, it's over for them. That person is taking on an insurmountable amount of risk. How much risk are you taking on, right? How much risk are you taking on? That person's work ethic to become the CEO and keep the company afloat? Crazy. They probably not taking days off like you think. It's not every day's vacation and it's peaches and cream. The responsibility to be responsible for hundreds and thousands of people's lives, that's a huge responsibility. Remember, we're talking impact to human life. And if you impact human's life on a massive scale, you get a massive reward. The amount of people Walmart touches, let alone from the people that are employed through Walmart, how many people shop at Walmart? Just think about the millions of people that shop at Walmart who have, even whether it's a crazy experience, we all know if you go to Walmart, you're gonna see some crazy stuff, right? Girls with they, uh, <laughs> and they bonnets with their pajamas on, dudes fresh out of jail with ankle monitors, weird people out the trailer park. We know what's at Walmart, right? It's the reason we shop at Target or Meijer or someplace else. We know what's waiting at Walmart, yet and still we go to Walmart though. And when you get to Walmart, you're not shocked when you see something crazy? Fighting at Walmart, you got that right. Fighting at Walmart, just, it goes down, right? Them low prices also bring in low standards and low class. And the CEO got to ride all that on his back. So he might not have to put in out the same amount of crazy energy down here, but trust assured there is some energy that's being put out here with the risk, responsibility, and work ethic that the CEO has, which is why he gets 22 million and why the employees do not. All right, you got to understand that. And do you know it's the same if you go look anyplace else? Any place else, if you get a chart, just go Google it. You can go get it, Google a chart. Look up Starbucks CEO. Look up Nike CEO, look up anybody, just look up any corporation, any big corporation that has a lot of employees, how much the CEO makes versus how much the employees make, and it's not hard to see why. One group of people is taking all the risk, right? One group of people is taking, has a work ethic responsibility. Now here's what I'm gonna tell you, last thing, let me erase this off the board, I'm getting ready to close this piece, but I need, I need, you to, I need to tell you this last thing, all right? This is a word to the wise about why I'm so big on entrepreneurship, all right? All of this, boom, 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 boom. Word to the wise. I'm gonna leave my website up there, all right? You can always check out the website. All right, if you are in Rockford or the Rockford area, then you know there was a business called Servicom. Let me put that on the board. Just in case any people from Rockford check in. Serv this is the this is the market that don't work. Where's my... Where's my marker that does work? Give me the red marker that works. There we go. Servicom in Rockford had 900 employees. I don't know if y'all seen better.com where dude just fired everybody <laughs> on the Zoom. 900 people, that's crazy, right? But that's the type of stuff I'm talking about. Servicom, I guess, ended up going bankrupt. I don't know the full story, right? But from what I understand is Servicom as a business institu institu institution ended up going bankrupt, right? So as Servicom is running out of money, people worked two, three, and four weeks and did not get their check, right? It was, oh, I seen it on Facebook Live. People was looking for the owner. They was cussing. They was outside somehow. They was going to fight the owner. They was like, man, when he pull up, it's going down. Police had to get called. Like people was really wilding. The owner wasn't nowhere in sight. Now here's the backstory information. 
Here's backstory information to this thing, right? The owner who owns Servicom, because his business was not generating the money that he thought it would generate, he had to let the business go. And it happens in business. You can't get mad that that man had a dream, followed his dream, and his dream allowed him to hire 900 people. That's an accomplishment. As an entrepreneur, I take my hat off, I bow. Like, that's a master right there who understands business. So you can't say he's a bad business person. Businesses go under. Maybe his business model wasn't working. He didn't have the money to get it inspected, to get it fixed. I don't know what the actual story is. But when you get to the level of being able to hire 900 people, that's high value, high impact. And that's somebody that understands business, all right? But Servicom, needless to say, went out of business. When Servicom went out of business, 900 people were let go that had worked and were expecting a check, but the money wasn't there. The money wasn't there, it wasn't there. People was going crazy. But as I talked to a lot of people that came from Servicom later down the road, guess what I came to find out? The mentality, the overwhelming mentality of the type of people that were being hired. And if you used to work at Servicom, it's not a shot at you. I'm just telling you the conclusion that I was drawn from talking to actual people who worked at Servicom. The overall mentality was that, was that because these people worked at Servicom for two weeks because they put in the work. The owner, by law, should give them the money that they earned because they worked for two weeks. But guess what, employees? If you're an employee, that's the risk you take. The risk you take as an employee, thinking your job is secure, thinking you're going to be there forever, thinking that nothing can go wrong because you're an employee and so you're covered by the job. If the business goes under, ain't nothing guaranteed. There's a lot of risk in being an employee because you don't know when that day could come. Not only could, maybe the business doesn't go under, maybe they just fire you. They just let you go. Businesses downsize or go in different directions every day. And if you get let go, there's nothing you can do because you don't have the power because you didn't take the risk. You didn't have the responsibility. You didn't have the work ethic that was put in to be at the top of the pyramid. You was at the bottom of the pyramid. And the people at the bottom are the ones who get squished first, right? You're at the bottom of the pyramid. The pyramid starts sinking in the quicksand. You're at the bottom. You're the first people to go under. There's levels to this. And if you're at the bottom, you're the first person to go in because of all the levels, you're at the bottom level. It's that simple. They never paid the employees. Employees was heated. They was like, man, I heard, listen, I'm going to tell y'all something. People was talking about how they was going to sue this man to get their money. Fam, let's keep it a buck. My attorney is expensive. If you work in this server com, chances are highly likely that you don't have the money for an attorney to sue this man. Not for the type of lawsuit you're going to need. So it sounds good, I'm going to sue him. But you're not even structured properly to get an attorney to sue this man for this money. And even if you did get an attorney to sue him, the business is, is filing bankruptcy. There's nothing you can do about it. If they don't have the money, they don't have the money. That's the risk you take when you go to somebody else and ask them to feed you. That's the risk you take. If they got food for you to eat, it's all good. It's all good until the day comes around that they don't got food to feed you with. And now all of a sudden, this person's terrible. This person's a monster. This person is horrendous. This person, all the negative things we say because this person was feeding you all this time and now you got to go get it on your own, which is why I'm so big on entrepreneurship. Even if you have a job, you should be at least having a business or a side hustle on the side so that if you lose your job, you're not 100% completely dependent on somebody else to feed you. You can go get your own money and make your own money and, and put money in your pocket and still take care of yourself and your family without depending 100% on somebody else. That's why I'm so amped about entrepreneurship. Like, I, like you, can, you can be your own boss. You just remember those two things we talked about? Don't be lazy and don't be a disbeliever. You got to believe and you got to have some action about yourself and take small steps every day. Think about this. If entrepreneurship is 90% self-development, right? 90% is self-development, personal growth, right? If you just make an effort to improve yourself by 1% every day at the end of three months in 10 days, you will be a 100% new person. You can do that three, you can flip that three times in a year. In one year, you can become a 300% completely different person. And that 300% di completely different person that you become can be the person that's on the road to cashing out all your dreams. I'm, I promise you, man, you just got to take it one day at a time. All you got to do is improve 1% a day. That's it. Make a 1% improvement. But what if you improve 2% a day? 
Now, I would use metrics to measure this. Definitely use metrics. Never say I want to make a 1% goal to smile more. You can't measure that in metrics, right? Use real numbers, real deadlines, real things to improve yourself. I want to read this many books. I want to join this many masterminds. I want to take this many courses. I want to buy this many coaches. I want to buy this much inventory. I want to research this much product. I want to research this many businesses. I want to write this business plan. Like give yourself real things to actually improve yourself. Don't give yourself these generic things. I want to be kinder. I want to smile more. I want to help more people be happy. How? What numbers can we look at to see improvement? The only way you can really know improvement if you can look at the numbers and the numbers suggest that you are improving because you started off only doing two, now you're doing eight, right? You had a deadline to hit it by the 13th, you finished it by the 11th. That can be measured. You can't measure a smile. I wanna smile more. Smile more than what? Are we measuring smiles per day? Do you count how many times you smile? If you don't count how many times you smile and if you're not that type of person, you can't measure smiles. You have to have real metrics and set real goals if you want to improve, all right? So with that being said, I'm going to close out. If you don't have my book, be sure to go get my book, Free Jewels. If you don't have our journal, be sure to go get our journal. But also, once again, if you are a barber, stylist, similar service provider, any type of service provider, be sure to stop by my website, www.workwithceobrohenry, and there is a free gift on my website that you can get, and I share with you my three key strategies that I use to build a successful client attraction system to make more money and generate more income than you're currently making without having to work 24 seven. So increase your income without having to increase your workload, and it's just about learning systems, all right? Um, this is, this, listen, I want to do some events. I want to get some people together. I want to, I want to, I want to get out and touch people, man. So if you like, um, events and you think we should host some events publicly, um, it, and for free, like everything don't got to be for a dollar for free. If you like the idea of a public event for free, man, drop something in the chat, um, drop something in the comment section, you know, give me some ideas. Let me know what you think, but we got a lot of space here. There's a lot of things that we could do to help people out. Um, we are working on, uh, last thing I'll share, we made it to the second round for a grant in our city. So if we're awarded this grant, um, then we will be able to take 50 new clients, 50 new clients who would like to become published authors. And we can either help you in the process over the course of a year, or you can join our accelerator program, depending on, we can only get so many people in our accelerator program at one time. Our accelerator program, even if you haven't written one word of your book, we help you become a published author in just two weeks and then give you a plan and give you the roadmap on how you can go take your book and sell hundreds and even thousands of copies of your book and become a full-time author and then use your book to put yourself in rooms where you can be a speaker, put yourself in rooms where you can uh, get booked for podcasts, put yourself in rooms to do different types of things. So if we're awarded the grant, our, our give back to the city is that we want to take on 50 new clients to become published authors. Um, and I'm excited about that. I think we have a good chance. If that's something that you know you would be interested in doing, becoming a published author, either over the course of a year, like you wanna write your book out and you wanna go back over it a hundred times and make sure it's just right. But I will tell you this though, or how should I say it? I will tell you this, right? My book right now has mistakes in it. There's like a whole two paragraphs missing in one of my chapters. My book has mistakes. It's got a couple spelling mistakes, a couple errors, and two, two paragraphs of one of my stories is missing at the beginning. But guess what? That didn't stop me from putting the book out. There's this uh, philosophy, build in the public. Build in the public means just like Disney Plus. When Disney Plus came out, there was all kind of mistakes on Disney Plus. It didn't stop Disney from putting it out. They started fixing the mistakes in the public. So titles were wrong. Things were spelled wrong. The wrong links were attached to the wrong movies. You push play to watch, you know, uh, Fantasia with Mickey Mouse and Marvel Avengers pop up, right? Disney did not care about the mistakes. If you're waiting to be perfect, you're never going to go into business. You're never going to make sales. You're never going to be perfect. I understand this. You're like perfect. Perfection is, a, perfection is an illusion. Leave perfection for the perfectionist. Most high. Even God himself is not perfect. How could God be perfect when the earth we live on that rotates at 1,037 and a third miles per hour has a wobble in it? It has a wobble because the earth isn't perfectly round. It's oblong. So if God himself ain't that type of perfectionist, what do you look like trying to be a perfectionist? If you got a book, put the book out. 
If you got a business, start the business. If you got something you want to do, go ahead and do it. Tomorrow, not even guaranteed, you may never get the chance to do it. All right. So I need y'all to I need y'all to rock with me on that. So if we're awarded the grant, then we will t pick up 50 new clients and we will do everything. We will help you hands on to become a published author. If you go through our accelerator program in just 14 days, we'll make you a published author, help you market your book, build up your clients, show you how to run everything you need to run to help you have a business system so that you can leave us and make money on your own and you can be a great testimonial and give results to how we coach and how we help you out. Okay. That's between me and the wife. That's the empower couple. All right. Um, lastly, last thing before I go, I don't have all my books are in the other room with this, where all the students are at, but last thing before I go, if you are a barber stylist, um, esthetician, whatever, if you are a service provider and you feel like you would need to take your business to another level, I work with those type of service providers to help you create a client attraction system and creating a client attraction system is not just about bringing customers to your business. You got the wrong mentality. That's not what I'm talking about. I help you create a client attraction system to generate more income than you're currently making without have to, without having to work 24 seven. All right. So once you learn that system and your system's automated, you can actually save time. Remember that pyramid we talked about, go up the pyramid faster, become automated, take your business to another level. That's what I help you do. If you're interested, you can always go to my website, Work with CEO brother Henry.com or bro Henry.com. My bad. Work with CEO bro Henry.com. You'll find it all over my web page, all over my Facebook page. And I think I have a CEO bro Henry and I have work with CEO bro Henry. And you can find me on Instagram and anything Kikifer is related and any of the other stuff that we do. You can find us everywhere. So make sure you check that out. All right. Go through it. I give you a free gift where I'm teaching you my three key strategies that I use to build businesses. And then after you get those three key strategies, you can choose to work with me, or maybe you just want to take that roadmap and implement it on your own and build your business up yourself. No problem. If you think that maybe we'd be a good fit to work together, we can jump on the phone, see where you're at. If I feel like I can get your results, then we can talk about working together, but I always let people know it's not free and it's not cheap. So other than that, I'm done for the day. I'm trying to really get in there and give y'all value after value every day. Oh yeah. One last thing. If you are enjoying these free information episodes, maybe podcasts, I don't know what to call it yet. I guess, uh, I don't know. Maybe this would be the podcast. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure out what we're going to call these episodes. But if you're enjoying this and you want to catch the playbacks, I take these videos down after 18 to 24 hours. You can catch all the playbacks from all the past episodes and get a lot more content from myself and my team. If you subscribe to our Patreon, it's only, uh, you can subscribe to our Patreon for as little as $5 a month. So great value, little price. And of course, the more, the higher tiers you go up on Patreon, the more access to more information you get. Um, but needless to say, anytime you join our Patreon, um, you will be supporting Kikifer's Entrepreneurial Academy so you can help students with their scholarship. You'll be helping to support staffing, organization, um, the uh, operating expenses, things like that, all kind of stuff related to Kikifer's Entrepreneurial Academy. So go ahead and join our Patreon. What are you waiting for? Get this valuable information. Plus, if you join at the right level, you get free group coaching from myself and from the, all of the millionaires in my circle. So go ahead, join our Patreon, stop playing games. You can afford $5 a month. Make that sacrifice. Let that be your first investment in yourself. And we can talk about everything else. Other than that, I got to go. I got children to pick up. I got dinner to eat. And I got to draw up a contract tonight that's going to take me another two hours for a huge close in business. So I'm excited about that. So after I finish the school day, then jump on here with y'all. About to go work on some more business. But that's what you got to do if you want to climb up that pyramid. CEO Brother Henry, I see y'all at the top.